Hey guys, welcome to the second episode of the Windows 98 Dice podcast. So we're going to be talking about the new series this time around. And um, yeah, there is a main topic this time around as well, because um, in the last one, it was mostly about the introductory stuff. So I was just explaining what was going to happen throughout the next episodes and all of that. And also I was answering your questions and also the other stuff. Before we begin, I have some stuff to mention. So first of all, a shout out to Vista for supporting my channel through membership and also for inspiring me to create this series because without you, I wouldn't be able to do something like this or even have the opportunity to animate or even podcasting. So yeah, thank you. Um, the other thing that I want to mention is that I will still be covering the routine part first which is the stuff that I covered in the previous episode in the same format, different content, but yeah. And then I'll be covering the main topic. So yeah, that's kind of what I wanted to say. And also I didn't manage to get two frequently asked questions. I only got one because I just didn't have time. I, I only have one day to work on this video. I just spent like yesterday doing my speech practice and stuff, but that was just one day and that's it. Kind of, I've just finished editing my my outline for this just a few hours ago, and now I'm just speaking through this after multiple attempts. And yeah, also I might sound different because I'm using my phone's microphone. Um, it's a lot harder to use my computer's microphone because it's a microphone stand and stuff, and I have, I don't really have a microphone stand, and it's also really hard to focus on there. So I'm just using my phone to record my audio. So let's get started with the first FAQ question. How do you make videos like this? I get asked this a lot. So I'm going to categorize this into three sections. First is experience. Second is technical. And third is software. For experience, I've been making videos for a number of years now, and I've used editing softwares formally ever since then. And me formally editing videos is really self-taught and I know that some people might take classes or something to improve their editing skills, but I didn't do it that way. I'm just, I just did it the, my own way and then I managed to get to this point. And yeah, it's just a matter of really trying out things by yourself and then also watching videos and tutorials for some advice. Um, and then you might be able to master the editing software that you're using, which in my case, I kind of did. I basically, I basically pushed Camtasia to its absolute limits before I stopped using it to the point where it just kept crashing so many times it, it would just crash multiple times at least in the intensive part like part 5 or something in my old 98 dice series and yeah that's kind of the stuff for experience and for technical side of things you have to use keyframes in your editing software I don't know if this is an amazing software I don't know if this is an amazing software I don't think it has one uh, there are a number of software that just don't have that kind of feature so you're definitely looking for some that have that kind of feature so for example Camtasia the feature itself but the feature itself is a pretty intensive software so I'm not sure if your computer can run it but yeah um, and the other thing that you need to use is well a software and well I'm gonna actually just segue to the software part so I used Camtasia before this and I used their keyframing system it was pretty good but it was limited. On DaVinci Resolve, you get a lot more sophisticated tools, like you get more effects, you get more, I guess, tabs in some way, because uh, you get the Fusion tab, which is specifically for effects, I mean effects and stuff. And then you get the Fairlight tab, which is for audio. And then the Color tab, which self-explanatory, is for audio. I mean, not audio, color stuff. I use I use them quite a lot, um, but I mainly use the Edit tab because that's where I get most of the stuff done. I do have to comment though, um, DaVinci Resolve has a less intuitive keyframing feature system, blah, blah, blah thing. It has a less intuitive interface, let's just say that, because it's a lot more advanced than that's just that's just a side effect of being more advanced in that stuff you know um and yeah i think that sums up for the faq i know that there's only one question but i'm going to compensate for this in the viewer question because i'm going to include another viewer question adding to the two that's already there so yeah um let's go to the viewer questions 
So Windows 7 Red Edition asked, who is the villain of Windows 98 Dies? So in the old series, I'm just going to say the old series and the new series. So in the old series, it was mostly Linux. And I just thought that that was the animation standard. I didn't hate Linux and I didn't make it an like antagonist just because I hated it. It was just because Vista was on to like made Linux as the antagonist in his old series. That was kind of the reason why I made mine because it was in parallel to Vista Dice. So it is a contrary to my personal experience for uh, Linux because I actually tried Ubuntu even before I made these kinds of animations and I found it pretty good. I just somehow didn't have the... Yeah, it was a network issue because of the whole stuff that didn't work for some reason. My internet stopped working on the OS for some reason. But yeah, that's kind of one of the things. And in the new series, there are still no villains for the first few parts, but there are going to be some. So for some examples, I would say maybe some Linux operating systems, but they all, they're, they're really dependent. And this is a really complicated topic now because uh, I'm putting a lot of reason into why I'm making these the antagonists of the, of the series. But even then, they're not going to be antagonists the whole time. They're, they're going to be protagonists at some point. And yeah. And it's structurally different compared to the old series because instead of just basing it off my like the whole animation standard thing that I was thinking about before this time around I'm actually basing it off like a conspiracy theory maybe or something like that and yeah that's kind of one of the things for the question that you asked uh, Windows 7 Red Edition and another question not by Windows 7 Red Edition by the way uh, how do you do these crops when Windows operating systems sit down. So this is a process called overlaying. So you overlay an image just with that object in mind. I mean, just, just with that object in the image. And then you put it on top of the layers of the Windows characters. So how what I'm saying is that every single like picture, even the logos are basically a layer on the editing timeline. So what you do is basically you just put the object only image on top of it and by doing that you basically make this like really accurate kind of layering and that's how i got the stuff working and to do that i use this software called pixlr e it's a really good editing photo editing software and it's web-based so that makes it i guess more convenient in some way and you'll have to use the WAND feature to, and also to outline the object that you're using to get it working. So I hope that helps with the question. I mean, can you remaster the wallpapers that I made? Yeah, you can. I'm actually looking forward to see the result for that. Now, um, this question, I mean, the final question is from Kirby. And he said, how long would the series be for Windows 98 dies? 15 or 30 minutes? Well, if you say in parts, each part will be 12 to 15 minutes long. And I've made a criteria where it has to be above 10 minutes, which 98's 25th anniversary is an exception because uh, it's split up into three segments. And overall, in the whole series is going to be several hours long, just like Vista dies. And now he asked this in Chinese, so I'm going to say this in Chinese as well. So... <laughs> Forgive me if my Chinese is bad, because I'm not really good at Chinese, I'm not too fluent at it. But here's what I wrote in the outline. Wait, what did Windows 98 dies the CD? I want to make a Again, sorry if I didn't really uh, say this right because uh, I'm still I'm not really that fluent in Chinese. Uh, I'm trying to develop redevelop my skill in that, but yeah, that was the last question. Now I have a structural basis question, and again, if you don't know what this is, I I'm gonna remind you guys to to watch episode one if you haven't because uh, that's where I explained what it's about. So the question for today's I mean for this 
episode is what kind of theme are you presenting for Windows 98 dies? Well, I want this to be, in, like, if you compare this to the old series, you can see that it's less realistic and stuff, but I'll get into that more in the main topic. So in this one, I'm going to have a more realistic and meaningful storyline. So I'm going to add more detail into it, which is why the parts are a lot longer as well. That's part of the reason why. The other reason is basically that I just didn't want to make like really short parts and then just post it because it's not really well made. And the other thing is that, well, it's similar to Vista Dies and the old 98 Dies, which is the theme of adventure. I just want this to be like a, I mean, I want this to be an adventurous kind of theme. And it's also sometimes cinematic, sometimes emotional, and just a lot more stuff. And I can't really spoil a lot of detail about this because, well, it's going to spoil a lot of stuff. But yeah, those are the themes that I'm going to be putting for Windows 98 Dies. And most of it, it's going to be adventurous, but there's going to be a lot of cinematic stuff maybe. But this is just a pretty early question for now because uh, I haven't really created the story for uh, the future parts yet. I haven't even begun working on part two yet. So yeah, we'll get into this later in the series. So that's one thing. Okay, so now let's move on to the main topic. So let me give you guys a brief recap to the previous episode because I did explain this topic briefly. So first of all, the series generally lacked lots of detail and story detail in the old series, I mean, and the fighting animations in the old series, actually all of this is in the old series. The fighting animations are pretty repetitive. I know they're good, but they're repetitive. And, well, part 9, and the roadblocks and the editing limitations that I had were some of the reasons why I had to restart the series. So, let's dive into the first reason, lacking lots of detail. So, in terms of visual detail, you can see that in the old series, most of the images are very blurry. The overlaying details are not very precise or just non-existent at all, and also well, the characters move too fast. It's a very fast action-paced kind of animation. And the scaling, the character scaling, was very inconsistent across each part. If you compare part 1 to part 6, at the same scene, at the first, uh, at the first scene, you can see that they have pretty inconsistent scaling, uh, character scalings. And I kind of managed to fix that in the new series. Although there are some like small inconsistencies and I just didn't really mind this as much as I do now because uh, I was just doing this, uh, I was just making the animation as I went along and then I didn't, didn't really mind it. I didn't even, I was not even aware of this properly and yeah. Now in terms of storyline detail, well there are a lot of stuff about this so First of all, the structural background is inconsistent, so there's a point in the series, there's something that happens in the series that contradicts another one, instead of being complementary to it. And also, the animations were really short, so I couldn't put a lot of detail into the animation itself. And the plot was also not very clear, and it didn't have a really good reasoning, so one of the examples that you can say is like, why is Tux the villain in the series? And I based it off the old Windows Vista dice too much to the point where it just became the quote unquote animation standard that I thought was there. And also the story was getting pretty repetitive with the fighting animations and it was entertaining for sure, but it lacked huge portions of crucial detail like the ones I mentioned earlier. And speaking of the fighting animations, it didn't really have a lot of meaning in the conflicts. It was just basically fighting animations, but that's kind of it. And I'm going to recap to the entertainment statement. Again, it was entertaining, but it just didn't have any meaningful detail behind it. And it lacked huge portions of crucial detail. Like, why is this happening? Why does Linux hate Windows? It didn't really explain a lot of that. And the most optimal way of using fighting animations would be, well, in a meaningful conflict, in a more meaningful conflict. So, for example, Vista Dies had a pretty meaningful conflict, 
which was resolved. But in my series, it didn't really have that kind of structure, which ended up falling of its own. Now, the other reason is about the storyline roadblock, and this one is about part 9. So, I mentioned this in the previous podcast, so it's about like how, well, I tried different areas, like I tried to do the Mario stuff, it didn't work, and then I tried to make a backstory, that didn't work, because, well, I had a horrible time management. Now, the other reason is also about the storyline roadblock, and this is about part 9. So I mentioned this in the previous podcast. So I tried different ideas, they didn't work. I also tried making a backstory, that didn't work. And then I eventually just cancelled the whole series altogether until I, well, I just restarted it again. And I tried many methods, some didn't work, some got left off, which I've mentioned earlier. And I want to talk about the lack of detail and the consequences of it. So if you don't put a lot of detail into your series, there's going to be a consequence of making it a lot more difficult to make your new ideas work with the existing storyline because it doesn't have a lot of detail inside it. And that's what caused a lot of the trouble in part 9. Because at that point, I just couldn't really find a way to form a new story and it just stopped there and this really led me to being dissatisfied with the lack of detail and also the methods that I've tried to use and that led me to restarting the whole series. Now I've talked about the reasons why I restarted my series but here are my plans for the new series. So I want more precision in both storyline and visual detail. Those are my main aims for the series because I've lacked a lot of it to the point where I just I couldn't form a good story. Just the visual detail was fine, kind of. And even that was not really that good. And each part is going to be longer this time around. It's going to be more than 10 minutes. If you compare this to my old series, uh, 98's Demise part, comparing them side by side, you can see how much different it is when you put it in 14 minutes compared to the 3 minutes. In the 3 minutes, all I did was basically just squeeze the whole detail into, well, 3 minutes and I, in the script, it's a lot more different compared to the video itself. And in the new series, I actually followed through 100% of the script. I did have to modify the dialogues, uh, some of the dialogues, but most of it was intact and also well yeah that's kind of one of the things that are my plans for the series and i'm also going to be occasionally uploading some epilogues for the series and these are basically prototypes so like the 98th 25th anniversary it's going to be a prototype because i can't fit in every single detail for from that prologue i mean from those epilogues into the series while I'm making it. Um, I might have to adapt some of the stuff, but I'll try to remain... I'll try to make everything intact as is. I mean, most of it. And this is going to be a routine release this time around, so it's going to be monthly. And it's basically... And instead of the really rough schedules that I made back then, it's going to be a monthly schedule, so now it's going to be a routine. And yeah, that sums up for my main topic. Thank you guys for tuning in to listen to this. This has taken me a while to actually get done. I'm not supposed to be working on this project right now because um, I'm supposed to be working on my animation at this point. But yeah, thank you guys for tuning in and I hope you guys enjoyed this podcast episode and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.